team is in England and just first kicking it off with just, you've been there, you've been in camp for a week, so just describe what you've been up to for the last six, seven days or so. Oh, it's been great, thanks, um, Martin. Yeah, we uh, we spent the first week in Leeds, obviously preparing for the warm-up match against them and uh, managed to, you know, get a you know a decent hit out and, and put on a, a fairly good performance there. And then uh, we've moved to York and, and we're preparing for the uh, the opening game against Lebanon. All right, so just I'm working out the geography here. That's kind of still around the... Is that still around the Midlands of England? It is, isn't it? No, oh, you're asking the wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not too. I'm not too familiar with the uh, with England. Uh, I'm still getting, uh, I guess, my bearings. But yeah, look, I, I think we're, we're in York, which is a beautiful town, um, about 45, 50 minutes from Leeds, where we were. So right. uh, we haven't had to move too far. But um, yeah, we're we're you know pretty grateful to be uh, based here for the majority of the tournament. This is your first World Cup, isn't it? It's not, mate. No, I've played. Uh, I played in the 2013 World Cup over here. Yep. Um, and un- unfortunately, we went down to the Aussies in the final. But um, yeah, this w- this is my second World Cup. All right, I'll start. I'll, I'll, I'll edit that bit out and I'll ask you, Karen. This is your second World Cup, yeah. so it's a bit of bit of time between drinks, isn't it? 2013 to now, so it must be really exciting to be back actually in the team and playing at this tournament. It is, mate. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a long time between uh, World Cups. Um, you know, last one being 2013, and then obviously I, I missed the the 2017 World Cup through injury and uh, and whatnot. So to be back in the fold and and be back here, you know, uh, representing my country is um, you know a huge honour, especially you know where where I'm at in my my career. Yeah, because I mean, like you know, I know you had a rotten run with injuries and things, and then when you got named in that, I thought, wow, what a great. I mean, I know this isn't the finish of your career, but just what a great way to cap things off for New Zealand. You know, because you never know, do you? You know, you play in 2013, I suppose you think to yourself, heck, I'll probably get another couple of these in. But it doesn't happen like that sometimes. Oh, you're spot on, you know. And, and, and I guess that's, you know, some of my teachings that I can pass on to these young guys on this side now is that, you know, you just don't know how your career is going to unfold and, um, you know, how many more times you could be in this position representing your country. You know, as you said, you know, in, in 2013, I, I thought I had, you know, plenty of tests you know, in front of me and, and, and plenty of time to achieve the things that I wanted to achieve. But, you know, I faced various, various hurdles uh, in in the past nine to ten years. And, um, you know, to uh, you know, like I was saying, you know, to be back here is, um, yeah, just a great honour. Look, you know, I, you played 49 games um, in the last two years at Manly, which is extraordinary because, I mean, I know it was a really injury disrupted at Canterbury as well. So how is the body, mate? I mean, you'd say you, you, are you at the stage where you think, wow, I mean, I'm finally getting some breaks and a bit of luck? For sure, yeah. The, the body's really come full circle, you know, from where it was uh, in those three years at Canterbury. I faced a, you know, a horrid injury run there and I, I wasn't too sure where my career was going to end up you know, at the end of that three-year stint, you know, I was, I guess, um, a bit short on options and uh, there weren't too many clubs keen on, on giving me another crack. But, you know, I was fortunate enough that, you know, Des had the faith in me and, and, and brought me back to Manly and I was able to, I guess, prove myself and, and get my body back up and running. And, um, yeah, I've been blessed to have the two, you know, the past two years that I've had on, on the pitch. Kieran Foran is with us and he's in the side to play Lebanon on Monday as we kick off the World Cup. And the World Cup, people are underway with England versus uh, Tor Samo on the weekend. You know, I suppose part of it as well um, is just trying to get to a stage where you can actually decide for yourself when you end. I always think it's really cruel for any athlete when all of a sudden those that's taken away from you. And I thought that was the position you were in. So that's why it's so delightful that you're actually back and you've got a black jersey on, mate. I'm really, really, I suppose I was going to say proud of you. I'm not, I'm just pleased for you. Yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, it is. It's uh, it's always a daunting, I guess, um, you know, picture when, as you said, you you're not sure if you're going to be able to finish your career on your terms. And look, I like to think I've still got plenty of life left in my career. You know, I'm 32 uh, as it stands, but you know, to, to be able to play basically every game over the past two seasons mm, shows mm. where's my, where my body's at. And um, you know, I'll be heading to the Gold Coast next year for, for two two more seasons and um, yeah I'm just really enjoying my footy again and where, where, where I'm at 
Kieran, say so obviously you know you, you you suppose I suppose you lose a little bit of base speed or something, but do you get cleverer as a player? Do you know what I mean? I mean, you get do you get smarter? You're able to kind of just use what you've got in your resources better. For sure, yeah, I, I definitely say that's the case. As you get older, you you know you have more games under your belt. You got more experience. You certainly. You know, your understanding of the way a, a footy game flows and and what you need to do to get around the paddock um, definitely heightens. And uh, I've felt that um, certainly over the past two years. And, um, you know, I hope that that continues to grow. And look, I, I guess the other component to it is, you know, you may you may be smarter in the head and, and in the mind, but you've you've got to be able to keep your body physically up to the... I guess the rigors that it needs to be at to to perform um, the games, you know, getting faster. Uh, it's getting more powerful. The, the athletes every year. So, you know, there's two components. Yes, you're getting more experience, but at the same time, you've probably got to work even harder uh, during your training time and, and off the field to actually make sure that your body can perform the way that it wants to. Look, I was going to ask you that. I mean, you know, between 2013 and now, and I know your career was obviously, you know, it has gone on much longer than that, but just even in these seven, eight, nine years, just the difference in the game, uh, you know, even year in, year out in the NRL, geez, I mean, some of these guys, I mean, you've got guys on the wing who, are, you know, that would be the biggest forwards at that time 10, 15 years ago. For sure. Yeah, I, I feel like the game is changing every single season, but but I do feel like, um, definitely, you know, around that 2016, 2017 period, the game went through a really, I guess, professional change. Um, and, and, and guys, you know, were training at, at, at a, such an elite level and, and such a high level that the, you know, just the speed and the power in which the game was growing, it, it just went from, you know, one end to the other. And um, and then obviously they, they tinkered with the rules a couple of years ago, you might remember, and uh, they brought in the six, six yep, again yep. rule and, you know, players then had to become more fitter and and faster, and I just feel like it's it's really gone through a, a huge transition. And um, I guess for blokes like myself who have been around a, a bit longer, you know, you've really had to work, you know, a lot harder to to keep up and and, and stay ahead of ahead of the pack. And how has it affected you as a person? Are you a lot more philosophical about it? I mean, we've just, you know, you've mentioned a couple of things there where it just, I get the feeling that you just, you know, you're in that headspace where you're just really loving it and really enjoying it because, you you, you know, you know that it can be taken away and you're thinking, heck, I've got some, I've got a nice twilight period happening here in my career. I've got to enjoy every single second of it. Is that is that kind of your headspace? For sure. You've hit the nail on the head. I think as you, as you get on in your career, um, I've certainly found that I've, you know, I've got a different, I guess, approach to my footy now, and and you do know the clock is ticking. You know that, um, you know, time is running. You know, time is running out. You you want to be able to, I guess, soak up every single um, bit of your career before it before it ends. So I'm at that stage now where you know potentially I know that I I won't play in another World Cup um, again. So, you know, being over here and, and being able to, to basically throw everything that I've got, you know, left to, that I want to do in a, in a Kiwi jersey is, um, is, is my goal at the moment. And such great experience, as you say, to pass on to the young ones as well. I don't know, you know, whether the young ones, they, they, how they are these days, whether they all look at all us old people. And, you know, you're not old, but I mean, I mean <laughs> look at us all and think, oh, yeah, 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 you're talking. But, you know, do, do you actually feel like that? Do you feel like it's not a responsibility, but it's something that you want to do? You want to just say, hey, pass on this knowledge. Dudes, I've gone through this. This is how it is. Yeah, for sure. You know, I, I look at all these these young guys that we've got in camp and they're just out and out superstars and you know they're at that stage in their career where they've you know they've got the world at their feet and you know their career can go one or two ways and um, I was there you know I, I was there uh, you know eight nine years ago where you know I was at the top of my game as a I guess 23 24 year old and um, and then you know I you know went through a horrid injury run and, and a fair bit of off-field drama and um, it took a dramatic turn but um, you know, you want to, I guess, save these young guys from having to go through that painful process if you can and um, and try and help them, you know, uh, yeah, just as, as best you can. So, you know, I'm always always chatting to them, always trying to, I guess, pass on my experiences and, and ho- hopefully they can um, take some of that on board. 
Where does it sit, the World Cup? You've won grand finals and, and you know, there's, um, I, I really like what Dylan Brown said about how, you know, he thinks that this is, is bigger and I hope it is bigger because representing y- your country has to be. But International League, you don't play an awful lot of it around the NRL. But, you know, when players look at it, they go origin, they go winning a grand final. But what is so different about playing a World Cup for your country? Is it just the rarity of it? Does that make it so special? Oh, it's everything. I, I think, you know, it's it's representing um, your country, you know, your, you know, everything that you stand for, that your family stands for. Uh, it's it's your dream as a kid. Um, you know, all us young Kiwi kids, you know, growing up watching our heroes on, on the on the TV, you know, wanting to be in that position and now we're finally here. Um, I think it's, yeah, the magnitude of a World Cup uh, being able to you know, hopefully win it and, and, and bring it back home, um, things like that. So, yeah, look, it, it's it's an enormous honour um, to be selected. You know, there's 24 players that are selected for each nation and, you know, to be a part of that, I think, is a huge reward and a huge honour for, for everyone involved. And, uh, look, now we've we've got the job ahead of us, you mm. know. We've, we've, you know, it all mounts to nothing if we don't go out there and, and, and basically win the thing. So, yeah. Um, you know, it's going to be a huge ask, but look, I think we're really well positioned, you know, to give it a good crack. You know, I think that this is as good a squad as as what I've seen over the years, and um, you know, it's our job now to put it together. And you think, so Lebanon, Jamaica and Ireland, I mean, when you say those three teams, I mean, there's a couple of names in there, you think, oh my God, you know, they, they don't sound as though they've got a lot of rugby league experience, but I know that these teams all they get players from all over the place. How is Madge looking at this? Is he looking at it going, okay, we're just going to kind of rotate the squad, we're going to get ourselves ready, because we are going to make the quarterfinals, it'd be an enormous shock if we didn't, and is that when the tournament starts for real, or am I getting ahead of myself here? No, no, we're we're certainly treating every game like it's a uh, it's a finals game. Um, you know, we've we've set out our standards that we want to, I guess, um, you know, reach each and every game, and uh, that won't change from you know playing Australia to playing Lebanon to playing Jamaica to playing Ireland. I mean, we we know at the end of the day that um, we can't just click the fingers and expect to to put on a hell of a performance come quarter final or semi final time. You know, we know that we need to be doing it now in the pool games, and uh, we won't be taking the foot off the off the throat. You know, we are we are going gun ho, um, right right out of the gates, and um, and, and we want to you know set the standard there. All right, finally, and thank you so much for giving us so much of your time. Really generous of you, mate. Um, you know, I know that um, I don't want to get too much into it, but you know, you've obviously been reading or heard that you know uh, Dez is now he's out of out of Manly, and there's, you know whatever happens here, we don't know. There's obviously going to be some kind of a resolution or a payout. But what did that guy mean to you, mate? Because I'm not saying he rescued you, but you know, after the Canterbury thing, he gave you, as you said earlier, that opportunity and believed in you. And 49 games says that that guy's got your back. Oh, for sure. Yeah, look, um, there's no... I've never hid from the fact that Des has, has, has played a significant role in uh, my development as a person and as a footy player. And um, I don't know if anyone's played as big a role, you know, in, in my career. He's He seemed to always... Or, well, I guess he was my coach at the start of it all. Uh, he was my coach when, you know, times were really... I guess struggling and and as you said he brought me back to Manly this last couple of seasons and you know helped revive my career so yeah look uh, it's extremely sad what's going on there I can't comment too much because I don't know the ins and outs of it but um, I can certainly comment on on the role that Des has has played in my footy career and um, it's been nothing but exceptional. Great talking to you mate all the very best Uh, such an exciting time in the next few weeks really appreciate all the time that you've given us. Cheers, Martin. Ta. Devlin. You've got to love sports. The Platform.